Yeah, I, I think we have to make a clear distinction between political discussions on the functioning of the court and the functioning of the court itself. As a court, we are a judicial institution and therefore we cannot engage in a political discussion. We are bound by the statutes, by the rules, and the judges, the prosecutor, defense counsel, everyone else functions by those rules. There is, of course, a possibility for a political discussion and it can take place in the Assembly of States Parties that is taking place yearly. The coming Assembly of States Party takes place here in The Hague in, this, in November of this year and there is an invitation from the President of the Assembly of States Parties to the African Union to, uh, to engage in that discussion. Um, and so we're very much looking forward that that discussion can take place in the context of that Assembly of States Parties. Well, in addition to that, of course, we have to keep in mind uh, that at this very moment there are many NGOs, there are victims who are petitioning their own countries uh, in order to appeal to the states not to withdraw from, from the statute. They believe in the system of the court, they believe in the fight against in impunity. Uh, and that is also what is important for us. Um, a withdrawal, a decision to withdraw from the statute would basically uh, be a very bad message towards the principles uh, on which this court is based. And it is fight against impunity, uh, justice for victims, uh, fair trials for accused persons. Withdrawing from that is depriving the people of Africa, the people in all the different countries who have been suffering or may suffer in the future from that protection that the ICC can provide. In principle, there's no impact on the existing cases. In case a country would decide to withdraw from the statute, it only has an impact on the future obligations of the state. And that means that once a decision for withdrawal has been notified to the United Nations, only a year later it will enter into force and it will only relate to future crimes that may be committed in the country. For the present cases, these are covered by the situation as it is now, where Kenya is a state party, and therefore the cases in itself will go on and there will be no impact, and the obligation for Kenya, the obligation for the accused to continue to cooperate with the ICC will be there and will remain to be there for as long as it is necessary to finalize those cases. I think the credibility of the ICC primarily depends uh, to the extent on which the ICC can show it can effectively implement its mandate uh, and can effectively adhere by the rules that are set out in the statute. Uh, that is a very important aspect and it means uh, that credibility goes to the question as to the quality of the judicial work and uh, the number of victims that can participate and can uh, show their hope in the justice that we bring. We see that a lot of victims do participate in our proceedings. We see at this moment also many NGOs that are petitioning different countries in Africa in which they emphasize the need to continue with the ICC system, not to walk out of that system. That is where credibility goes. Of course, in addition to that, we can have political discussions on the way the court can function, but that can be uh, covered in the process of the Assembly of States Parties. But the credibility of the court goes to the credibility of the judicial work of the court.